Oh, okay. Hey, uh, one piece of uh, administrivia that I want to cover. So the uh, the posted uh, time for this class is from what? From like 5.30 on Wednesdays until 8 or 9.30? 9, 10. 9, 10? 9, 10? I'm an old man. I'm, I'm asleep by then. So... Um, <laughs> And also, uh, is anybody coming from the west side or have a long commute to get in here? Yeah, a couple of you. Okay. H how about this? Um, I don't want to be in four hours of class every week. That's, that's uh, I guess it's ca ca caught on tape now, but that's a long time. <laughs> uh, so, and, and really, in, in years past, uh, you know, I think by the end of three hours, even with breaks and stuff like that, that's plenty. Um, so, uh, and also, uh, starting at 5.30, it's kind of early for me. I don't want to have to leave work that early if anyone's commuting in. So how about this? Um, how about we start at 6 o'clock from now on? 6 o'clock, okay, work for everybody. And um, if uh, it won't be three hours. Actually, go, you know, watch the, it, all of the, the classes from previous terms are, uh, are up there. It's like two and a half. Um, okay, then. Cool. Um, I'll post something to the community to let anybody who's already left know um, that, that we're starting at 6, but uh, we'll do that from now on. And I think that will uh, that'll work better for everybody. Okay, cool. Okay. Anybody have any thoughts during the break? Anything they want to share? Any questions that came up? No? Okay. Let's do a little bit more TDD, and then let's uh, finish off. Okay. Um, you know what? I didn't commit this code. I should probably do that. Uh, I don't even remember what changed now. Okay, two files. So what I can do is I can click on this, and then... Uh, oh, where is it? Let's copy the clipboard. I'm looking for the diff. Uh, Command D. It's the problem about learning the uh, keyboard shortcuts is that you never remember where everything else is in the UI, in the UI in the ID. Uh, and Command D will show me the diff, so it'll show what changed. And here, I can see I changed my to string, and I can go to the next file, and I can say, "Oh yeah, this is the test that I added, and I ignored it." Uh, and the reason I'm doing this because I want to commit this code, but oh my gosh, it's been ten minutes. I don't remember why I wrote ten minutes ago. Um, okay. So uh, created an end-to-end -end test. Uh, it doesn't pass yet. It, it won't pass for a while. I'm going to push all that out. Uh, uh, those three warnings and those parameters that don't exist yet. Notice that I'm pushing, and it's got multiple commits to push, even some things that I added uh, from the command line. I'm going to push all those guys out to GitHub. OK. Oh, need to enter my password because I Gonna enter it correctly. There we go. Okay, okay. So let's see here. What does a more simple test look like? What could we test? We've got this big long e uh, string that we want to get to. Are there some baby steps that we could take along the, the way to get us to that string? Huh? Part partial string? Okay, let's try that. Uh, where do you want to start? Start at the very beginning. It's a very good place to start. Sound of music, anybody? Uh, okay. So let's see here. Uh, so student named Dave has name of Dave. Eh, eh, eh. Okay. So now we got to create our Dave student. So let's do what we did up there. Actually, yeah, I'm lazy. Copy and pasting code. Hmm, I don't remember that for later. Okay. So uh, now what do I want to assert? Insert that Dave dot two string. Do I have a starts with? Starts with. Do I have a begins with? Begins with. Okay. Because uh, what I, I want to say is I want to say something like begins with Dave. Oh, we could. I want to see if there's a ham crest matcher though, because uh, I likes me some ham crest. Uh, to me, my Google. Okay, so let's see here. Uh, Hamcrest. Oops. Hamcrest. Uh, Java Hamcrest. So that's cool. Uh, binaries. API documentation. Hamcat. Hamcrest 1.3. Oh, 
matchers. So handcrest core string contain. Ooh, string starts with. Sweet. Uh, starts with. Okay, and so then. Uh, core. Where's matchers? Oh, it's org hamcrest matchers. Anything? Look at all these things. Contains in any order. Oops, what the hell did I just do? There we go. Uh, starts with. Sweet. Okay, so now you just got to find the right thing. I, I recommend that you go off and spend a little bit of time with the hamcrest tutorials or get through do that here again, something that will. Um, that will benefit you later. Starts with, okay, and IntelliJ, are you, no suggestions, anything else? What is that, uh, shift control space? Nope, okay, I'll have to import it. Let's see, matchers, oops, matchers dot, matchers, no, oh, here we go, core matchers, does that work? Okay, that works. Do I have an old version of Hamcrest? Why didn't I find that? Hamcrest Core 1.3. Yeah, I have to think about it later. Um, and that's not very readable, so um, Alt Enter will let me do things like, hey, add a static import for that. You guys know about static import? It's a newer language feature. You can say import static and then uh, the name of a class, actually a fully qualified method, so a class and then a static method on that. It just makes your code a little bit easier to read. Okay, here we go. Assert that Dave two string starts with Dave. Let's run it. Fail. Okay, starts with Dave, but was hello. Okay, so what do I need to do here? What would Uncle Bob do? It's green. Okay, so I did the red, I did the green. Refactor. Anybody seeing double? Okay, so what do we want to do? I think we want to create a method that returns this Dave student. So, oops, how was that? Um, Refactor, extract method. Okay, get student. Uh, let's call it create Dave student. Idea has detected one code fragment in this file that can be replaced to call the extract method. Why to review and replace it? Yeah, I would. <laughs> cool. Excellent. So it created a new create Dave student method and it calls it in two places. I'll run my test again. Oops. Oh, it's complaining about the other two methods. Um, I want to get to these test methods next week, so I will add ignore this for the time being. Okay, it's telling me that I ignored a bunch of them, but everything else passed. Yay! Okay. Uh, alrighty then, let's commit these. So, uh, added a simple test for the name of a student. I don't want to push that one. Uh, okay, so I've got this test. Um, now I want to write my next failing test. What should that be? Because I'm not feeling too good about the two-string method, right? Aha, uh -huh, a student called Frank. Okay. Uh, so, what? My method would be student named Frank has name, oops, has name of Frank. Okay. Um, oh, watch this. Student Frank. Uh, equals, I'm going to have a oops, it would be equal to create Dave student. Um, 
I don't want create Dave student, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say refactor. I think it's under refactor. Yes, inline. Okay, I'm going to take a method that inline all invocations. No, inline this invocation and keep the method refactor. Ah, I got all that code. That saved me a lot of typing. Uh, and now his name will be Frank. Oh, I don't like. Yeah. Um, no, I've got something better. I've got something better, so I don't want to do that. Here's what I want to do. I want a method called, yes, create student named Frank. That's way better. So here, OK, so now I want, uh, I want, let's change the name of this to be, oh, well, let's do this. Yeah. OK, so I basically want to say, well, I, I want to change this to be instead of create Dave student, I want to be create student with uh, a given name. So I'm going to say, well, this, I don't want this to be the hard coded value of Dave. I want this to be a parameter. So I'm going to say refactor, extract parameter, and I'm going to call it name. Cool. And then I'm going to say instead of create Dave, I'm going to say rename and have it called create, oops, have it called create student. Oh yeah, I like the Kool-Aid man. Okay, uh, and now I'm gonna say assert that Frank dot two string starts with Frank. Okay, now let's run this guy. I'm just gonna run this one method. Oh yeah, you know actually probably what I should have done. I refactored without without seeing uh, run green. Bad Dave. I'm gonna ignore this. Uh, ignore this test. Actually, no, I'm gonna do. Yeah, I'll ignore this test for the time being. I'm gonna run all my tests again. And when I have the the, the cursor in between tests, and I say Control uh, Shift F10, it'll run all the tests. If I have the cursor inside a test method, it'll just run that one test method. I'm gonna do it outside so it runs all of them. Good. Everybody still passes. Now I will unignore the Frank method. So that means my refactoring worked, right? Um, so now I'll rerun Frank, and Frank fails because expected Frank and was Dave. Okay, now what do we gotta do? Let's make the two string function smarter. Okay. I have the make smarter refactor right here. No, I don't. <laughs> Darn. Okay, I'm out of tricks. Okay, so what do I gotta do? Yeah. Um, you know, I pass it to the the um, the the, the superclass, so uh, it's kind of well. Too bad I don't have source code, but does this tell me anything? Uh, this dot name equals name. Yeah, so maybe there's a name parameter. I should. It's too bad that we don't have the source code. So if I say this dot name, oh look at that, IntelliJ. So that okay, it's compiling, so it wasn't private. It was protected or something. <coughs> Let's try it again. Let's run this test. Hey, and it passed. Excellent. OK. So, uh, so a student, uh, the, the toString method, toString method now returns the name of the student with a test to match. OK. Cool. Okay, good deal. So we've got some tests. We're building them up. Uh, oh, that's a good point. Was, it, was there an opportunity to reduce from refactoring? I didn't see one. Anybody else? But we kind of did some along the way with the create student. That's kind of nice. Okay. Cool. So I'm going to put this down for tonight. We'll come back to it next week. Do some more. Hopefully finish it off. Uh, one more thing I wanted to discuss from the... Uh, from this tonight, and that is project one. Okay. Okay, so that student uh, assignment is a sort of a little toy assignment that we use for the TDD, and of course you're free to do it on your own, but what really counts is project one. So project one is the, the first uh, in your, in the series of the phone bill, well, is the first project in building a phone bill application. This one's sort of all about the initial design. So, um, what you'll be doing is creating two um, classes called phone bill and phone call uh, that you'll be using throughout the rest of the of the course. 
Um, both of the classes that you create will extend uh, classes that I wrote. I wrote an abstract phone bill and an abstract phone call class that provides some of the functionality, and then your job is to take those classes, extend them, and implement them according to the well, implement them according to assignment, and also use them from a main uh, main method. I know that in order to get everything to compile, you have to implement all of the abstract methods of the superclass. So a phone bill has some information, a customer name, and it has multiple phone calls. Um, and then each phone call has a person who's the caller and the, the callee. They have phone numbers, uh, and it happens at uh, and the phone call happens at a given time. For this first assignment, all the data can be represented as strings. Some of you might know about the date class. Great, use it. For this one, you don't have to. If you're not familiar with it, you will later down the line. So you can choose whether or not you want to um, uh, use that use those intermediate class, uh, the more advanced classes um, now or not. So you need to create a phone bill class, a phone call class, and those are used by a, uh, a main method that's in the, the project1 class. Uh, and there what project1 does is it parses the command line, uh, and there are arguments and options. So there are uh, five required uh, arguments. So customer, which is the person who's making the phone call, uh, the, the, number, the caller number, the callee number, and the start time and end time. The, uh, the format of the uh, start and end time is in 24 hour time, so it's month, day, year, and then hour, minute. Um, preceding those are two options that are optional, and they may appear in any order. The dash print will print a description of the new, new phone call by invoking the two-string method, which I believe. Um, and then dash readme, which prints a readme for the project and exits. We'll see more detail about the readme uh, next week. Uh, note that dates and times should not be quoted, so these are two separate command line arguments. But if you have a multi-named customer, uh, that should be in double quotes on the command line because that's only one argument. Uh, notice there's some validation that you need to do. Uh, phone number should have the uh, format uh, three digits, a dash, three digits, and then four digit, a dash, then four digits. Uh, let's see here, a bunch of footnotes there that uh, you can read. Um, if something goes wrong, like there's something wrong with the command line, you know, arguments missing, things that are malformed, please exit gracefully. I don't want to see stack traces, don't want, uh, you know, big ugly things, uh, you know, error messages and uh, the, the friendliness of them uh, and the, yeah, the count. Um, and, uh, oh, note that, uh, yep, all the source code can be found, sorry, all the compiled code can be found in that jar file. But if you use the Maven archetype, and I highly recommend that you do, uh, it, all that will be set up for you. Um, so uh, this project uh, can be uh, started from using the Maven archetype. And when you do that, you'll get uh, these files uh, there, including oh, package.html. That's nice. And then use Maven uh, to run it. Actually, I guess we haven't seen an example of Maven. Let's go back to the um, student application real quick. Now that we've got all those unit tests passing, I think we should be able to say Maven package. So Maven package will um, build the uh, compile the source code, run all the unit tests, and it'll build the artifact. In this case, it's an executable jar file. And so we say java-jar, run the Java uh, VM, and execute the main, the main method of the class as specified in the, uh, in the jar file. So, so we target student well, snapshot.jar. Oh. And invoke the main method and didn't do anything because the main method doesn't do anything. Let's go fix that. Student.main system.out.println hello student. We'll run Maven again to rebuild everything. And then we'll run the jar again. Yay, it ran the main method. Uh, okay, all of that works, and that's how I recommend. I recommend that you do something similar for uh, for that. Oh, I guess another thing that I didn't show. We run Site. So Site, what it does is it builds a whole bunch of documentation like Java Doc and stuff like that. Um, and depending on what I've got configured to run, uh, PMD. What is it complaining about now? Check style. Oh, it doesn't have fine bugs or anything like that. Oh, it blew up. Probably doesn't like Java 8 stuff. Yeah. That's okay. 
that creates a um, file in the site directory called index.html, which gives you, um, this is something that Maven does here, again, watch the video, you'll see more examples of it, um, that gives you all sorts of information like, oh look, here's Javadoc for the program, uh, sorry, for, for the code that you wrote. And it links off to, does that work? Yeah. The, uh, the Javadoc for my code, too. Anyway, um, this I don't think the site documentation will be part of your grade, but it's something that I encourage you to play with and see how easy it is to do with, uh, with Maven. <clears throat> oh, that's the student. We'll come back to that later. Um, great. And that's it. So, um, you know, the, one, of the, one of the reasons I go through the student uh, project with you is that you end up doing the same kinds of things as your project one. So not exactly the same, but hopefully, you know, well, you can go back and watch the video if you weren't paying attention, I suppose. Um, although if you weren't paying attention, you didn't, didn't just hear me say that. So uh, anyway. Um, uh, right, so you can go back. Uh, so, so you can do the same kinds of things that I did for the student for your project one. This is due in two weeks. Is that right? July 8th? Yes. Um, any questions? Yes. Um, up there at the very top, it says seven points. Yes. So something called the POA. What's the POA? We'll find out next week. Okay. I'll keep you in suspense. Right. That way, it'll show up, right? It's like, oh, one more, one more point. So it's a, worth me coming to class. So listen to him make bad jokes. Anything else? Any other non POA questions? No. Okay. If you're, if you're really interested, there's a handout in next week's. Uh, section on the syllabus, but yeah, you know, you're on a need to know basis and you don't need to know yet. Okay, any other questions? I hear notebooks closing, crapper keepers, and all that. Oh, was that timing or what? What's up? <laughs> How will the graded project project be graded specifically? Very thoroughly, I'm sure. No, um, I I grade all the projects except for the GWT one. Rather, Sean does um, using a set of scripts. And so I provide a bunch of inputs to your uh, command line, and we capture the outputs, and we grade based on that. Uh, and so that's how we you know, look at things like, hey, did you have a reasonable error message? And how did you handle this input? Um, I guess for this first project, you know, after you, you realize, like, wow, it doesn't do a lot. Yes, it doesn't do a lot. Uh, because really what this project is all about is making sure that you can well, build a Java project, and that you can execute the command line, you can parse things, baby steps. Don't worry, it'll get harder. You'll get your money's worth, okay? <laughs> you won't be thanking me later. Okay, anything else? Yeah. When are you going to upload this screencast to that? Uh, as soon as I can. Uh, probably, I don't know, I'm kind of tired. Um, maybe I'll get some of them tonight, but uh, definitely uh, I'll try to get them done before the weekend. I will send out, uh, I'll publish them to the, um, to the community uh, or not. Okay, anything else? Okay, have a great week, everybody. Uh, please fill out the survey. Join the Google community. Make sure you can get on D2L because there is a quiz. Let me know if you have any questions. We start at 6 o'clock next week. Have a great week. Do next week. Yeah, the quiz is that, yeah. Okay, bye.